Don't panic, Brett. We're recording. Ah! <laughs> Not like I can't just edit some stuff out if we need to, but <laughs> we're rolling. The cameras are on. The audio's rolling. Recording away. Good morning, Tom. How are you? Really good. Full. Because we had Thanksgiving yeah. yesterday. I don't know when you're listening to this, but we just had it yesterday. And so uh, we uh, are a little bit overloaded, a little sluggish, but we're pulling through. Right. Well, happy Thanksgiving. It was a, a nice time for all. Good time. It's an eating holiday, eating and football holiday. Yeah. Um, as you, people that listen to this podcast consistently know, I'm a Bears fan. So we're just going to put the exclamation point on the end of that sentence right there. And we're not talking anything Bears today. So <laughs> next subject, unfortunately, the Dolphins lost to Green Bay, but nice mm-hmm. football and eating holiday. Yeah. So we enjoy it. Yeah. I am grateful for you. I am grateful for you, Tom. Thank you. And we are grateful that there are people listening to us and potentially getting some help. So we're grateful to our listeners. So, Tom, this week leading up to the holidays, I had to talk a few people through Mm. some panic attacks. Mm. Okay. Um, Seems like uh, that was a common theme in the last week or two as the holidays were approaching. Yeah. Um, People um, uh, had some panic. So let's talk about panic, panic, panic attacks, anxiety attacks. They're all kind of relatable. They're all kind of interchangeable kind of terms. But what is a panic attack? Okay. Well, let's get into that. Many of you out there have experienced panic, and maybe the first time you didn't quite know what it was, and you felt like maybe you were having a cardiac issue. You felt mm-hmm. like maybe you couldn't breathe. You felt like your heart was racing or flip-flopping or skipping beats. Maybe your palms were sweating. Maybe you just didn't know what to do with yourself. You felt like something was missing, something bad was about to happen, and you just wanted to like go curl up and be left alone. Yeah. It's that, and that, what is really common is that impending sense of doom, like something really bad is happening and I just can't put my mm-hmm. fingers on it. Uh, the first time it happens for people, it really mimics a heart attack or a cardiac event. Mm-hmm. Um, so if it's the first time it's happening to you and you're not sure, that's the time to call emergency services. Um, yeah. um, so, but if you've had them before and they come again, at least it's a, you're reassured it's probably not a cardiac event it's just panic so what is panic well panic is just a high level of anxiety right so what we say is panic attack is a physical manifestation of anxiety so it's anxiety that's reached the level that your brain can't hold it anymore and it comes out physically so it's a physical manifestation of anxiety and it like we said it, it different things for different people um sweaty you know diaphoretic um you, your heart's racing, you're, it feels like there's a band on your chest, you could have some numbness, it's hard to breathe, um, you get tunnel vision, like you lose your peripheral vision, and you just can see straight, um, mm-hmm. lots of different things, and it's scary, scary as heck. Absolutely, and some people get to the level where they actually like faint, um, mm-hmm. because it's too much, it's too overwhelming, and the body goes into a state of shock, and not sure what to do with itself. And you need to get some medical attention uh, during that time, especially if it's the first time, because better safe than sorry. Oftentimes, if you do go to the ER and they run some tests and they uh, they check your, you know, check your levels, check your vitals and, and whatnot, maybe they can administer some medication to kind of help ameliorate those uh, symptoms. Um, mm-hmm. So... You know, and it happens. And sometimes people have had one panic attack and then they never come back. Uh, sometimes people, they come right out of the blue um, when they least expect it. Some people, it can be predictable. In certain situations, there's some warning signs. Um, when their anxiety gets heightened, it can lead into panic. Um, so it's different for different people. I know that's not helpful. But, um, some people are like, I don't know. I was just, I was fine. Everything was great. And then all of a sudden I'm, you know, in panic. Um, unfortunately, I've had several people that it happens while they're driving. Um, mm-hmm. That can be scary. Uh, Absolutely. So I had uh, one guy I worked with and it happened only when he was driving on the interstate, which is the worst place. Mm-hmm. Yeah. 
Um, so he avoided the interstate uh, for some time. So the long-term solution to panic is obviously getting in touch with a professional um, to figure out the the base cause of anxiety and, and you know what that's related to, so you can help resolve some of that anxiety that's leading to panic. I mean, that's the long-term solution. Mm -hmm. But there are lots of short-term solutions as well. Yeah. And what I encourage people to do is, if you've had a panic attack, I mean, there's some basic things that you can you can do, some, some tried and tested ways that you can work yourself through a panic attack. Um, breathing is like the biggest one. So it's just um, focus on your breathing, you know, breathing in sequence, box breathing, uh, focus on inhale, hold it for a few seconds and exhale. Um, and what is happening in your brain when we say it's a physical manifestation is, and younger people aren't going to get this reference, but it's like a skipping record, right? The needle gets stuck on the record. Mm -hmm. <laughs> and some people, most people are like, well, what does that mean? Anyway, right. so it's a we call it a negative feedback loop. So your brain gets stuck into, oh my gosh, I screwed up this project at work and then I'm going to get fired and then I'm going to lose my house and I'm going to get evicted and my spouse is going to leave me and then, oh my God, my life is over. And, and it just goes in this negative loop. And the more you- Slippery think slope. It, yeah, the more you think about it, it just goes circular and then you just, and then it leads to panic. Well, the way out of it in the short term is skipping those thoughts, right? Getting out of your head, distracting yourself to get out of that negative feedback loop and focus on anything being in the present, focus on breathing, focus on, you know, just slowing your physiological down, slowing your heart rate, slowing your breath, mm -hmm. slowing your breathing down um, and, and not thinking about what has caused panic, what's causing the panic. Mm -hmm. Tom, what are some of the tried and true ways that you have taught people? So if we, if we can uh, stimulate the, uh, um, uh, vagus nerve uh, re response or um, soothing that, that has been helpful. So, I mean, you could take your palm, and you probably can't see it because of my camera, and just hold right in the center of your chest and just breathe and focus on the warmth from your hand being on your chest. And this is helpful for mindfulness as well, or being in the present moment. And just focus on what your fingertips feel like against your chest, what the palm feels like, the temperature of your palm, and just focus on your breathing. You can even turn your head to the side and just hold it for a couple of breaths. And then at some point, maybe it takes 30 seconds, maybe it takes two minutes you'll have this like heavy sigh relief moment. And when that happens, turn your head to the other side and just hold that, keep your hand right on your chest. Just do that deep breathing. Just focus on the breath moving in and out. You'll have that audible sigh, that heavy sigh, that just relaxation feeling, and then come back to center and just keep focusing on your breathing. This helps put you in the moment and uh, can help stimulate that that vagus nerve kind of uh, response also when it comes to the panic like you said it's that heightened state of anxiety so if we can manage the anxiety before it reaches that level that can be really helpful once again as we've said many times and a good reminder anxiety always lives in the future it's when we start to go down that slippery slope we start to have an emotional reaction to things that we don't want to have happen or because we're worried that things we want to have happen are not going to happen. And so it's important to get back into the present moment and not have the emotional reaction to things that haven't occurred back to, you know, your mom, why suffer more than once mm. regarding uh, that thing that can be challenging to do at times. So we try to manage those anxieties or those anxious thoughts regarding and then the feelings that that coincide with them so that it doesn't reach that place of panic another uh, technique that is helpful for some not helpful for all is to sit with those thoughts because when we try to avoid things it, sometimes it becomes well don't think about a purple elephant then that's all you can think about and you're trying to avoid it you're trying to distract yourself and most of the time, the distractions can be helpful, but there are times when that impending doom, because there's a situation that you're dealing with that is not going to be resolved quickly, and it's going to take time and resources, and there's a lot of things that are out of your control. <clears throat> we can sit with those thoughts 
find a quiet place where there isn't any distractions and allow those thoughts to be there. And for some, this can become a desensitization. So I've had those thoughts again and again, and I'm thinking about it and I'm worrying about it. And instead of having the emotional reaction, put your brain to work on the tasks that you would need to do in order to deal with whatever that situation is. Okay, come up with a plan. You know, this is if this happens or doesn't happen consequently, then what am I going to do about it? And once you have that plan, then focus on the plan that you're going to do instead of the thing you're worried about. So let's say you're worried about um, not being able to make that appointment next week because you have that something conflicting, but you can't seem to get out of both of them. And you're, you're not sure you can reschedule uh, one or the other, and that's causing you anxiety, just as an example. And I think that's relatively innocuous, but I think some people can appreciate the scheduling conflicts. I know I can. Um, so what am I going to do if I can't reschedule those, uh, those appointments? What would be the most important one to attend to? Um, and then do that one and then cancel the other one and then figure out when you're going to be able to attend that one or reschedule that one or disappoint somebody in the future. That's okay. That's a plan. Now focus on the plan that you're going to, that you're going to enact. Should these things occur, that can be really helpful. Like I said, thinking about it over and over and over again may in fact help people to um, desensitize themselves to it. So even though they're being triggered and the thought is there, it's like, well, I already have a plan. So whatever happens, happens. Now I'm going to get back into the the present moment and just focus on what I need to deal with. Over time, this can help uh, greatly reduce the frequency of the panic or even eliminate it altogether. And then you're just dealing with the day-to-day -day anxiety that um, you, may, right. you may have. Yeah, so two schools of thought, either sitting in the mud puddle or not. You know, it's sitting in the mud puddle and dealing with it and riding the wave and run through those emotions and setting a plan in place. Um, and I think, you know, after you know later on in your panic journey maybe after you've had a few and you you know li lived a tale the tale um sitting in the mud puddle is a, certainly a therapeutic way um you know with us maybe support of a good therapist um on board is a good way to do it um and then the non-sitting in the in the mud puddle way is i just need to stop this i need to stop this panic like now yeah. um and like we talked about breathing being in the present moment um, you know, there's a traditional way of engaging your senses, your five senses. What's five things I can see? What are four things I can hear or touch? Hear? Yeah. What are three, three things, things I, I can touch? touch? What are two things I can smell? And what is one thing I can taste? You know, right. so you just engage your senses. Um, and then what I encourage people to do is Google how to stop a panic attack and a thousand things will pop up on Google. Um, mm -hmm. And why I encourage that is different things work for different people. And I'll give some examples. I had what well, what is actually kind of common is um, sour candy or real hot candy, like those warheads or Sour Patch Kids or yeah. uh, something like that is to keep some of those with you. Just the sensation of having that real sour or, or hot, spicy um, taste in your mouth, it can be enough to stop. Um, that works mm -hmm. for many people. Um, I had a, a woman that um, would have was a newer executive and she would have panic attacks during big meetings. And it was really, you know, because she was like, I can't have a panic attack during this meeting. I'm really mm -hmm. trying to impress these people. And then, of course, just that thought would kick her up into having a panic attack. So she kept a, a Yeti full of ice in, uh, with her. Um, and when she felt it coming on, she would pull ice out and just push it to the roof of her mouth. Um, and that was enough of a tactile sensation to help relieve the panic. So different things work for different people. Figure out what works for you. Um, you know, the, the whole goal is to get through in the short term, but then the ultimate goal is to get through in the long term to help the avoid these things in the long term. Yeah. Writing about it, journaling about it. And I know as therapists, we always prompt uh, journaling in some respect or writing letters uh, to yourself or to the person that have harmed you, things like that. These can be great therapeutic techniques. A lot of people poo-poo the journaling because it seems, you know, like 
just an extra thing that I have to do now and I can't bring myself to do it and what's the point? Well, you know, here's the point with regarding panic. If you write about these things that you are concerned with, worried about, and you keep writing it out day in and day out, you know, you start to get desensitized to it and it doesn't have the same hold over you because you're like, I've been writing about this stupid thing for, you know, two weeks now. And I, you know what, I'm tired of thinking about it. I got to move on to think about something else. You know, I'm going to control what I can control and that's going to be helpful. Also, we've probably shared this before. DBT has a great, uh, they have a lot of acronyms. One of the acronyms um, to use regarding distress tolerance is the TIP method, T-I-P-P, -P, and that stands for temperature, intense exercise, uh, progressive uh, muscle relaxation, and paced breathing. And those four things can be incredibly helpful when you have a panic attack that is emerging or you're currently in one, or just if you have a level of anxiety that's heightened and it's impacting your ability to function. So temperature, changing your temperature. If you are cold, go get warm or hot. If you're hot, then go get cold, maybe a cold shower, an ice bath, or just splashing cold water on your face. And I think this go coincides with like, that that taste sensation too, like if like you talked about the sour uh, foods where that just changes and brings you back in the present moment. But if you can change your temperature, if you got to stick your head in the freezer, then go do that. You'd be surprised and amazed at how quickly that returns you to the present moment. Intense physical exercise, we're talking about like heavy weightlifting where you're you're under a load or the bar where you have to focus on that thing and you're not thinking about anything else because you're like, oh shit, I'm going to mess myself up. Or like sprinting, you know, like going for a walk can be nice because it can be meditative. But if you go for a run and then you sprint, you know, from one lamppost to the next or one stop sign to the next or one mailbox to the next, uh, all of a sudden that intense exercise or hit training, if you've heard of that, that can be really good at bringing you back to the present moment where I'm just focused on how I feel right now. And it's intense mm -hmm. breathing or, or um, progressive muscle, you know, the two P's or whatever. Um, yeah. um, one, the pace breathing, which was, you were talking about uh, box breathing or counting and holding uh, for a certain amount of seconds, you know, like seven seconds, for the inhale, six seconds on the hold, five seconds on the exhale, or, you know, just coming up with different numbers for that. Right. That can be really helpful. But just focusing on the breath and, and pacing it can be extremely helpful. And then the pro progressive muscle relaxation is this phenomenon that occurs when you contract, tense, and hold any muscle or muscle group and then release it. The, the process that occurs when you release that muscle is relaxation. You know, you tense it up, it squeezes all the blood and fluids and nutrients and oxygen out of the tissue. Uh, by the way, this happens with cold too. If you put like ice on a, a muscle, you know, or muscle group, it, it, it pushes all the fluids and, and lymph and everything out of the tissue. And then once it warms up again, or once you release the contraction, fresh blood and oxygen, nutrients and whatnot rushes in to the uh, muscle cells and it causes a, a sensation of relaxation and it starts to trigger the parasympathetic nervous system. So squeezing and contracting and holding muscles, muscle groups, and then releasing fosters relaxation. So if you do this, maybe you do it for two minutes or maybe you do it for 20 minutes and you focus on contracting the different muscles of your body, tensing, relaxing, tensing and relaxing. This can foster a place where you're now in the moment and you feel relaxed and you're not thinking about that thing mm -hmm. that was causing the panic in the first place. And, you know, we've talked a lot about tips of what happens when uh, yourself uh, has some panic stuff, but let's talk for a minute about what if you come across a friend or a family member, or even a stranger for that matter, that you think may be having a panic attack? Um, you know, how can you be helpful besides just running out of <laughs> running away, which is what most people do. <laughs> uh, good luck <laughs> so with you, that. But yeah, but if you see, you know, somebody that you think might be having a panic attack, um, you know, some of the things that you can do to be helpful is 
first just you know introduce yourself if it's a stranger or acknowledge the person that you're here hey Tom, I can see that, you know, it looks like you're a little uh, distressed, you know, it's me, Brett, are you, are you okay? You know, and then Tom, Tom will do what Tom does and just say, um, you know, it, it looks like you might have a panic. Has this happened before? That's a really important question. Mm -hmm. Because if this hasn't happened before, it could be like we talked about earlier in a cardiac event. So it might be a different response. But if they say, you know, yes, this has happened before, then it's probably panic, right? And so just, you know, is there anything I can do for you? Is there anything I can help with? You know, don't bombard them with questions. Keep back. Don't crowd people. They need their space. You know, they're when people are in distress, their bubble gets bigger. Mm -hmm. But is there anything I can do to be helpful? Um, you know, can I get you some water? Um, would you like me to breathe with you? You know? Yeah. Pick one of those. Don't bombard people with questions, but yeah. you know, be helpful. Be calm. The, because they're going to be look, reading your face for what they should be doing. So, you know, what we call that being a duck, you're calm on top of the water and underneath you're paddling like hell. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. So uh, like some things that might be helpful if you see somebody. Just be there for the person. Uh, right. Things that are probably not as helpful is trying to fix their problem right away, offer solutions or trying to change how they're feeling by saying, you know, well, that's not anything you have to worry about or everything's going to be okay. Or even I understand these mm -hmm. things are um, not really that helpful. So just uh -huh. being with them and asking what they need from you in the moment is much more helpful than saying, I completely understand. I've also had the same situation before and this is what I did. Like they're not listening. Uh, to right. that. Their brain can't comprehend a bunch of stuff. So calm, yeah. easy, you know. Yeah. Little words as possible. I can appreciate where you are is a much more helpful statement than I understand. What can I do? Yeah. Yeah. What can I do what for you right now in the moment? Panic. Panic at the disco, Tom. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> hey, that's a good title. Panic at the disco. Panic at the disco. We can we can name it that. I, I wouldn't want to get in any copyright. Uh, oh, yeah. <laughs> Panic of the discos, right? Put a nice on it. That changes the whole. Yeah. Panic at the discos. Hey, it's Black Friday. Pa Panic at the discount. <laughs> Panic at the discount. Okay. Yeah. <laughs> I like it. <laughs> Panic. Tom, have you ever had a panic attack? Yes, uh, I have. And interestingly enough, it was uh, an unconscious thing because I didn't know what I was worried about. But in the moment, I, I was stressed. I was overwhelmed. I was trying to do too much, which is uh, categorically um, uh, not a surprise uh, for me. That's just end up <laughs> I end up living my life that way. Uh, but when you feel stressed and you feel overwhelmed and you you don't really have a thought uh, per se, or you've got millions of them just bouncing around. And I remember having that panic attack where uh, my my heart was racing. And things seemed relatively good right then in life. And this was many years ago. And um, I, I didn't know what was happening. I thought that maybe I was having a heart attack. And I didn't necessarily want, I was at work at the time, um, not doing therapy. This was years and years before that. And I, I just remember um, expressing it to other people. And somebody said, you might be having a panic attack. And I was like, well, I don't have panic attacks. I, you know, like, this is ridiculous. I feel like I need to go to the hospital, but I didn't want to go to the hospital because, you know, then you, it seems like it's money. And then just the whole experience of going to the hospital, I don't really right. like hospitals. Um, so they said, lay, lie down on the floor um, and put your legs up in the chair and just put your hands like on your chest and then just oh. breathe and don't focus on anything else other than your breathing. And in that position with my legs elevated, I learned later um, that that's sort of like a modified Trandellenberg position where somebody's yeah. having a, a a weird heart thing. They on the gurney, they elevate the, the legs and that seems oh. to help. But um, so I, I, I laid down on the floor, put my legs up in my office chair uh, at the time, like at a 90 degree angle, if you can kind of picture that where, you know, the lower part of your legs or the, you know, calves are on the chair, 
with your feet and then um, your thighs are at a 90 degree angle uh, to your hips and just just breathe and that seemed to bring myself back to a place of balance and that helped and it, it probably took like 15 20 minutes but that was scary that was weird now i've had tremendous anxiety heightened states of anxiety since then but it's never gotten to that level of having a uh, panic attack the only other thing that was an actual cardiac uh, event was the afib uh, that happened a couple months ago um at uh, the beginning of this it was almost a year ago tom right can you believe that yeah <laughs> uh, and that was wild haven't had any other issues since but that yeah. was also um uh, I was feeling a lot. I was feeling overwhelmed. I was feeling stressed. I was trying to do too much and it manifested uh, as that I wasn't getting enough sleep. And that was a big problem. And I think we've worked it out that that was the cause of it, you know, overworked, overwhelmed, not enough sleep. Mm -hmm. And uh, that led to that. Now, haven't had any other issues uh, since then. I've been monitoring it. I've been making sure I get sleep. I've been de-stressing and uh, not, not taking on as much as I had been, which has been a challenge for me, but it's felt good now and it, it's become the norm. And um, so, yeah, I haven't had any other issues with, with panic uh, since. So those two uh, instances, and it sucked. It was crazy. Uh, and I, I don't recommend having them. <laughs> But to me, I remember, I remember that morning, Tom. Right. And you, I, we were talking, I asked you a few questions, and you looked at me, and I'm like, I'm going to tell you something you absolutely don't want to hear right now. <laughs> go to the fucking hospital. You need to go to the hospital right now. <laughs> you need to go to the fucking hospital. I was like, no, I just need to take a good shit. That's it. Mm. You know, like, dude, no, go there now. No. <laughs> <laughs> it was, it was even uh, funny because sitting in the, in my truck in the ER parking lot, now, my wife was working and she happened to be across the street because uh, she's a nurse at the hospital um, uh, across the street from the ER, from the main hospital. And I, I called and left a message um, saying, you know, uh, you know, talk to talk to Brad. I am apparently an AFib. My watch is telling me I'm an AFib. I really don't know what that <laughs> that means, but I'm going into the ER. It's probably nothing, um, but I'm just going to be better safe than sorry. You know, like I even left that pleasant message or what I thought was a pleasant <laughs> message you know, on the phone. And of course she was like, what the fuck? And, you know, she, <laughs> but, uh -huh. but yeah, even up to that moment, I was like, you know, everything's all right. I'm just going to get myself checked out, you know? And, I mean, it had been hours that my heart was doing the top part, portion mm -hmm. was doing that racing thing and the bottom was just doing not keeping up no yeah. not keeping up yeah mm. uh, <laughs> <laughs> so yeah, i do have so uh, again, medication you don't on, i do have medication on board should uh that that occur so mm -hmm. i don't know if this is going to be a, a thing or if that was an isolated uh instance so mm -hmm. this is where medication can help re regarding panic as well mm -hmm. And if you have something as needed, you know, mm -hmm. uh, like, a, you know, I'll say like a Xanax or something mm -hmm. that you don't take, but you just have in your pocket just mm -hmm. in case that can be right. a helpful thing. So it would be important if you are experiencing anxiety and you have been for some time and you are more prone to having panic attacks than having some medication on board, whether it's all the time or whether it's just as needed can mm -hmm. be really helpful. And since, you know, I'm never short of giving my opinion on this podcast, I do have to put out there, um, there are some good medications for anxiety and panic. Um, and, and there's some medications that um, specifically benzodiazepines, let's talk about those. Those are good as PRN medications, or they're good in the short term. Um, really, we've learned over time that benzodiazepines are not good to be taking on a daily basis for extended periods of time. Yeah. Right. There's a short term solution, six months, a year, something like that, um, because they are very addictive. Um, the efficacy, it seems like you have to increase the dose over time because it's you're not having the same effect from the same dose. You yeah. max out at that point and then you have to withdraw from it at that point <laughs> when you're at max dose. So benzodiazepines, they're great as a PRN medication. So I don't knock them and, and I don't knock anything. If it works for you, work, it works for you. But remember, and benzodiazepines is um, 
for us older people. You remember when grandma had to take her nerve pill? <laughs> that yeah. was a benzodiazepine. That was, that was benzo. <laughs> and they took them. I mean, my mother took uh, benzodiazepines every day of her life until the day she died. Um, I mean, it, that's what it was. But there's a lot of um, poor outcomes or side effects that happen with long-term use of benzodiazepines, particularly in senior citizens. Yeah. Um, so just be careful. Yes. I do have many clients who have that as needed uh, medication sure. and they never use it uh, or maybe once or twice, you know, just what, if there was an intense, you know, or panic attack uh, type of uh, event. And that was really helpful. But just knowing that they have that available mm -hmm. uh, can can really help. Exactly. Yeah. When you carry around a fire extinguisher, you're not as very worried about fires. <laughs> yeah. yeah, exactly. So in lieu of carrying around the fire extinguisher, um, mm -hmm. you know, carrying around a benzo or or something that can right. just use pill in a pocket. <laughs> the pill in a pocket, yeah. Pill in a pocket. Yeah. Cool. Well, Tom, there is no reason to panic at the discount, right? It's Black Friday, so go be a good consumer because yeah. I won't be. <laughs> go get some uh, wonderful sales and uh, and enjoy, um, you know, your time. Stay safe. Out yeah. there. I know it's going to be uh, chaotic, so do your best. Absolutely. So no panic at the discount. Breathe. Just if you need to sit in your vehicle in the parking lot and just be there and breathe, you know, don't worry because Cyber Monday is coming. All right. <laughs> All right. Small business Saturday, Cyber Monday, Giving Tuesday. Yeah. Hey, and if you have some great suggestions about what has worked for you to relieve the symptoms of a panic attack, let us know at questions at therapyunzip.com. We'd love to hear those from you and share them with our audience. Please do. Thank you again for today, Brad. Thank you, Tom. Great to see you as always. Same. And we'll see you guys next week. Next week.